proactive. Through insane celebrity endorsements and being a first of its kind product, they managed to absolutely dominate the skincare regime of the 2000s. But it seems their prominence isn't the same as what it used to be. I mean, when was the last time you saw one of their classic commercials? Well, don't worry, because today we're breaking down and looking back on everything proactive. From their wholesome beginnings to their sad end, this is Proactive, a look back. Proactive was invented by Dr. Katie Roden and Dr. Kathy Fields, two Stanford medical students who always had a passion about skincare. They noticed there was a hole in the market when it came to acne care products. Big companies didn't realize the potential they had and therefore didn't put the cost or effort into researching better acne solutions. The only solutions prior were one spot pimple patches that usually contained a lot of strong chemicals, but there wasn't anything that cleared all your acne in one go and then kept promoting healthy skin after the fact. So they got to work and managed to make an acne clearing product that felt like a high end beauty cream. In 1993, they would show up at the front door of Neutrogena with a plastic baggie full of their new product that they had named Proactive, and Neutrogena would take a hard pass on it, telling them the only way they'd even consider selling the product was by doing infomercials. This initially wrecked the pair of aspiring dermatologists who had been using their own funds to make all the prototypes. Shortly after this, by complete coincidence, Katie Roden's mother would be at a conference when she would meet the aunt of Greg Renker, one half of the Guthy Renker company. A company that, get this, makes infomercials specifically for the beauty and health market. Yeah, talk about fate. Through that connection, Guthy Renker takes notice in Proactive and schedules a meeting. And even though the idea of an infomercial initially felt insulting to Roden and Fields, they eventually caught on and agreed to a licensing deal with the company. While the numbers aren't known, we know from an interview with the two doctors that they estimated they had spent around $30,000 of their own money on that venture, so they probably were just looking to take anything over that. And honestly, I would too, girls. Get it. They gave Guthy Ranker control of pretty much the entire company for a 15% revenue return to Rodin and Fields. And shortly after this, we would finally get our first advertisement. In 1995, Proactive would air its first commercial with Judith Light as a spokesperson as she herself claimed to suffer from acne problems. They offered a two-month supply for $39.95 plus $5.95 for shipping and handling. God, remember the term shipping and handling? Safe to say it worked pretty damn well, and the company took notice. Through the years, they have had countless celebrity endorsements, noting it as a key part of the company's success. And these weren't just small names they got. They had Britney Spears, Jessica Simpson, Katy Perry, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Kelly Clarkson, Avril Lavigne, Lindsay Lohan, and even more recently Kendall Jenner. And that just scratches the surface. And I know what you're thinking, well, did they have any male influencers? Well yeah, of course, they had Justin Bieber, who worked with the company for three years, and they had, uh, uh, well sh but anyone with some common sense could tell you that these aren't cheap names. So how did they get all of them? Well, that's because Proactive was making bank, baby. In 2010, the company had reported making approximately $800 million in sales, which is crazy. And leads me to my next point, which is, who is buying this? Who is the target audience for Proactive? Well, the obvious answer is people with acne. Or if you really want to be from the 2000s, you could just say, women. But in actuality, it's teenagers. Teenagers and young adults are the sole purpose these exist. And why is that? Because that's the time of your life when you tend to care the most about your appearance. When you're in middle school, high school, and even college, fitting in and being accepted and perceived in your own way is a huge part of life. I mean, it's the classic coming of age dilemma. And when do you usually start getting acne in your life? during that time. The time when you put yourself under a microscope every day, worrying about what these people are going to say when they see your zit. Will your crush hate you? Will your friends make you sit somewhere else? Obviously, as an adult, we can sit back and laugh at those questions. But as a 14 year old kid, that's the struggle man. And in the 90s and 2000s, kids watching a lot of TV was kind of the norm. And when they see this commercial on TV, they immediately feel seen. I mean, it's literally a solution to a problem in their lives. 
And on top of all that, celebrity culture in the 2000s was at a peak itself. I mean, with the internet just getting bigger and bigger, being involved in celebrities' lives was easier than ever. And again, who tends to care about celebs' lives the most? Teens and young adults, baby. All creating the perfect recipe for money. I mean, the product was created by two college women for God's sake. And Goofy Ranker were honestly geniuses in noticing this trend so early on. Using strategic partnerships with celebrities who were super popular with the 13 to 24 year old demographic at this time, leaving these commercials as a lasting legacy and a nostalgic memory for an entire generation. I mean, as kids, do we ever think it was weird that like, only adults were advertising this, yet no adults seemed to use it? Proactive would be sold exclusively online when it first released, which actually was a huge win for the company. Because, like I said earlier, in the 90s and 2000s, it was still pretty common for sexist tropes to, well, exist. Meaning, men did not typically buy this kind of stuff in fear of being made fun of or feeling lesser, even though they also care about acne. And while there's not any specific statistics on it, I almost guarantee that this is a huge reason for sales with Proactive specifically. You could have your mom buy some for you, it comes right to your door, and no one would ever know. Your crush won't hate you after all and online sales are still primarily how Proactive is sold. While there are some stores that sell the product, it's unlikely you'll find one out there. They also used to have a partnership with the American Vending Corporation, where they had Proactive vending machines in malls and airports across America that offered all types of Proactive products. Speaking of, let's take a quick look into some of the other products Proactive has made through the years. The company originally specialized in acne care, but since it's grown into much more, including a line of toners, moisturizers, body washes, face masks, cleansers, exfoliators, and pimple patches. They even have specialized routines and three-step lines, which could be a mix of their products that are meant to be used in a certain order for ultimate results. They have a bunch of niche stuff too. They have stuff for certain skin types, skin colors, blackheads, whiteheads. I mean, they truly have a total hold over the acne care market. Proactive had a large influence in the world. It really was the first of its kind in many ways. Even just the commercials alone will forever live in millennials and Gen Z's heads, and the commercials definitely impacted the world of marketing. In the 90s, most beauty and health stuff like this was advertised in a typically over-sensual way, to the point where one might even call it kinda horny. Rodin and Fields, though, didn't want that for the product. They wanted to keep a sleek, professional, medical vibe to it. That, with the celebrity endorsements, it created a whole new subgenre of commercials. And other brands were quick to catch on. And if you go back and watch some of those old 2000s commercials, when it comes to the beauty ones, you can see they all have a professional sleekness to them, typically with one setting and one spokesperson holding and describing the product with some shots thrown in of how the product works. And Proactive was notorious for those. I mean, they literally invented the little swipe that is so iconic to beauty and health ads even still to this day. Which leads us to our first bit of controversy. Because, let's be honest, we can see these commercials and be like, dude, there's no way, like, is that even the same guy? While the commercials are very memorable, they were literally insane. And they weren't any different in the UK. In 2012, the UK refused to air the Katy Perry and Justin Bieber commercials because the UK version didn't have the same active ingredient as the American one, and apparently Proactive just didn't want to pay the celebrities to re-record the one line. They also had an ad get pulled from the UK in 2017 as the ad literally implied children would be bullied if they didn't use Proactive. Yeah, seriously. Misleading advertising aside, another thing people complained about a lot was the product not only not working, but also making their skin even worse. There's many cases you can find online about how Proactive caused allergic reactions in many patients. And those allergic reactions, while kinda rare, can cause irritation, puffiness, and insane redness. The amount of these reports was enough for the FDA in 2014 to issue an official warning to everyone who planned on using Proactive or any similar products. And most recently, the company, along with several others like it, are in the midst of a class action lawsuit, claiming that Proactive didn't reveal the actual amount of benzene in its product, and benzene is a carcinogenic. So yeah, not looking so good for Proactive these days. And after all that, one more thing I want to mention before we finish soon is that in 2011, Consumer Reports conducted an experiment where they used Proactive, Acne Care, and Oxy Maximum against each other among 83 participants. Acne Care has the same amount of benzoyl peroxide as Proactive, 2.5%, while Oxy Maximus had a whopping 10%. 
And after the trial had ended, they concluded that literally all of them had the same effect. Looking back, we get to see the pioneers of a market, both in skincare and advertising. And while the future of Proactive might be unsure right now, probably for good reasons, I mean they literally tried to pull a Johnson & Johnson baby powder on us, I still can't help but have a special place in my heart for them. I know it's just the rose-colored glasses, the nostalgia bubble, whatever you want to call it, but man, watching those commercials again for this video really gave me an odd wave of comfort. It was kind of nice, honestly. And it made me think back to that one time I used Proactive. I remember seeing the Jessica Simpson commercial, and for some reason that one specifically just like, really stuck with me. And like I said, I remember seeing it right around the time I started getting acne, and in 7th grade, I decided to give it a try. And while no, I don't have a horror story, or a miracle story, it was really a niche feeling in my life that is hard to articulate. Nostalgia mixed with melancholy. I remember looking in the mirror every day after, and luckily by the time I headed into 8th grade, I was blessed to be pretty much done with acne. But, it really was a different time, man. And I want to hear what your proactive memories are. Did you get a severe rash? Did it help you get your crush? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so into the crush bit. Maybe that's why I got proactive subconsciously. But, whatever the reason is, I want to hear it down in the comments below. Maybe you never use proactive, or maybe you just want to leave me a video idea for something else. Whatever the case, give the video a like if you like it, and make sure to subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next look back on the 18th. Peace.